Okay, welcome to this second video in a series of videos on factoring. You should have already watched the video on overviewing the factoring process. Uh, and now we're going to drill down and look at the methods individually one at a time throughout the next series of videos. This video I'm just going to focus on this first method here, which is GCF slash undistribution. So let me drill down into this into the concept map, and we'll make a sub-map for this as we go. Okay, GCF slash undistribution. It shouldn't be too much of a surprise that GCF stands for greatest common factor. Okay? And we kind of joke around that GCF also stands for gotta come first. Okay? It really stands for greatest common factor, but what we mean by gotta come first is as you learn multiple factoring methods, you always want to look for this one first. Some problems you'll be asked to factor literally have multiple steps. If they do, you always want to look for this one first. So GCF is kind of a double meaning. It means greatest common factor as well as got to come first. So let's talk real quickly about some prerequisite skills about greatest common factor. One is you need to absolutely be able to identify a GCF. If you can't identify a GCF for a given number of terms, you really shouldn't move forward into this video. Go find another video or look it up online, but you have to be able to identify a GCF where variables involved, exponents are involved. The other prerequisite skill is you have to be able to divide monomials. Okay? You have to be able to do division when there's exponents involved, and we need to be able to do distribution to be able to check our work. Okay? If you don't understand distribution, creating these problems that we sort of say uh, by way of undistribution won't make any sense to you. Okay? So I'm going to, in a bit, try and get the steps here for this process. And hopefully, you guys will also sort of not just watch this video, but you're sort of maybe even taking some notes along with them because. Just watching it is a help, but you know, making a note of these things as we go is pretty important. Okay, so let's take a look. I'm going to very briefly overview the prerequisite skills that we talked about, two of them at least, finding the GCF and division of monomials. Okay? It also assumes that you have some background in this, and this is just more of a refresher, but if you're lost here, stop the video and go look, do a Google search or a YouTube search for finding a GCF, uh, or dividing monomials. Okay, so real quickly, if we find the GCF of 4x to the fifth, 12x squared, and 6x cubed, the one thing I do is I look at the coefficients of 4, 12, and 6, and I see that the greatest number that goes in all three of those is 2. And then I'm going to look at the exponents of, excuse me, the uh, variable factor parts of x to the fifth, x squared, and x cubed. And I'm going to use the smallest exponent of the three, which is x squared, making the answer to the GCF here 2x squared. Uh, just very briefly, the exponent can't exceed the smallest exponent given. Otherwise, it won't be a divisor for it. Again, if you're lost on that, go look at another video and try and master that skill. So in this second example, we don't have any coefficients, so I'm just going to look at a and a and realize that the GCF there is a. Uh, the exponent in both of them is 1, so if I take the smallest exponent, it's a tie. And then for b to the fifth and b cubed, it's going to be b cubed because it's smaller. And then I notice that the c is not common, it's only in one factor, so I skip it, and I see that the d is not common it's only in one factor, so I skip it. So the GCF here for both these terms, AB to the fifth C and AB cubed D, it's just AB cubed. So now division of monomials, okay? Here we need to be able to focus on something very quickly. You should remember that you have to subtract exponents. For coefficients, you just do the normal division, okay? So this first example, there's not a lot to do. If we see it's negative 10xy over 10xy, uh, we hopefully see that the 10xy's cancel, and you're just left with the, the negative 1, okay? 
That actually is something that will pop up as we do these problems. And in this next example of negative 25a to the 5th, b to the 6th, over negative 5a cubed b, I'll just take it in pieces. Um, negative 25 over negative 5 is 5. a to the 5th over a to the 3rd is a to the 2nd when I subtract exponents. And b to the 6th over b is b to the 5th. Again, that b has an exponent of 1. If you are not mastered in both of these skills, you're really going to limp going forward into this. So if you're not mastered here, you need to take some time and get mastered. Otherwise, you're going to have a tough time going into the next couple examples. Okay, so let's actually look at factoring with GCF, the full process, the full-blown process here. Okay, so we see here that it says the steps are... One, find the GCF of each term with little asterisks. Divide each term by the GCF to find the other factor. And then three, write the answer as the product of the GCF and the other factor. Now, again, what did the asterisks refer to? Well, the asterisks referred to this right here. If the first term is negative, make the GCF negative. It's just a rule. Uh, if we take a look at what we're going to factor here in these two examples, the first term here is not negative, so the GCF is not negative. The first term here is negative, so whatever the GCF is will make it negative. All right, so let's actually just delve into these examples. And once you get going into these problems, they're actually pretty easy. Um, just take your time. It's easy to make a mistake, but they're also uh, decently easy once you, once you have an idea of what you're doing. Okay, so we're going to find the GCF here of each term in this first expression. So I have 8, 12, and 16, and the GCF of those three numbers is going to be 4. I then notice that there is not an x in each term, and there's not a y in each term, so they are not common, so the GCF is just 4. Okay? So divide each term by the GCF. So I'm going to take each term and divide it by 4. Eventually, what I just did in green, you'll be doing in your head. So now... I'm going to write the answer as a product of 4 and the other factor, which is the result of this division. So we get that 8x over 4 is 2x, 12y negative over 4 is negative 3y, and negative 16 over 4 is negative 4. Now, we talked about why you would need distribution. Well, you need to understand that you've now written a distribution problem. Uh, it is the answer. It can be checked by just doing distribution. So we got 4 times 2x is 8x. Okay. And sorry about that. <laughs> and we got 4 times negative 3y is negative 12y. And 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. Okay. So that answer seems legit. I'll circle it. That's my final answer. So we'll go to this next example. I'm going to try and show you three examples in this video, three more examples in this video, uh, each with increasing a little bit in complexity. So we see here that we've got to factor negative 12x plus 18z plus 24. I also notice very quickly that the first term is negative, so I'm going to make my GCF negative. Okay. So the question is what goes into negative 12, 18, and 24? I think that is going to be 6, the largest. But again, it's negative 6 because the first term was negative. I don't see an x in each term. I don't see a z in each term. So there are no more uh, components to the greatest common factor. Okay, so I'm now going to divide each term by negative 6. Obviously, the signs will change because I'm dividing by a negative. And the other factor I'm writing here is just going to be the result of that division. So negative 12x over negative 6 is 2x. 18z over negative 6 is negative 3z. And 24 over negative 6 is going to be negative 4. I can distribute that out and check my work. I'll leave that to you if you'd like to hit the pause button and do so. This is my answer. Before I go any further, 
I just want to reiterate a fact from the overview video. And that is that I have taken a difference or a sum and written it as a product. Okay? Again, factoring is about writing something as a multiply problem, as a product. So again, this expression here, negative 12x plus 18z plus 24, it's a sum. It's now written as a product, negative 6 times the quantity, 2x minus 3z minus 4. Okay, uh, I've got almost an identical slide here for you, and uh, a couple more examples. I'm going to keep working these steps. These steps are really, really what you're expected to master. You just have to execute them over and over until they become rote. So, I see here I'm going to find the GCF of each term. I, I respect my asterisks here. Okay, and I realize that I do have a negative, so I'm going to make my GCF negative right to start. Okay, and then I'm going to see that I've got 10, 15, and 35. So I'm going to say that the GCF of those numbers is 5. And then I'm going to take a look at my x squared, x, and x cubed. Again, my smallest exponent rule makes me take out the x. Then I'm going to look at my y, my y, and my y. And my smallest exponent rule there obviously makes me take out the y. It's a tie. So here, I'm now going to go to step two, which is divide each term by the GCF to find the other factor. So I'm just dividing by negative 5xy. Eventually, you'll be able to do this in your head, but I'm illustrating it here for clarity. So my other factor that I'm going to get is the result of dividing by negative 5xy. So here I'm going to get 2x and the y's cancel. I subtract the exponents on the x. Then I'm going to get plus 3. The x and the y both cancel. So it's just plus 3. And then I'm going to get um, minus 7x squared and the y's cancel. Again, the squared is got by doing 3 minus 1 with the x. If I were to distribute this out, I would, in fact, get the original problem. So I'll leave that to you if you'd like to hit pause. And I know that's my answer. OK. Again, I'm going to take a look at this next problem, 22b to the 11th minus 11b squared plus 44b cubed. OK, I'm going to try and find the GCF of each term. My first term is not negative, so it does not have to be a negative GCF. So what is my GCF of 22, 11, and 44? I believe it's 11. And then what is my GCF of b to the 11th, b squared, b cubed? It's going to be the smallest exponent again, which is b squared. Okay, And then I'm going to divide by 11b squared in every term to find my other factor. Okay, So what does that look like? It's 11b squared times the quantity of 2b to the 9th. Subtract the exponents. Now I've got minus 11b squared over 11b squared. A lot of kids go, oh yeah, I'll cross that out. But when you cross it out, you have to realize you have to write a placeholder. When you crossed it out, you did not create a 0. You created a 1. In this case, it was a negative 1. So you have to make sure that you don't lose that term. Very common mistake when kids do these problems. Okay, and then I'm going to continue and go plus... 4, b to the first, and I don't need to write the 1 when I subtract 3 minus 2. Okay, so if I distributed that out, it should be legitimate that the two expressions are equal, that the answer to the distribution would be the original problem. Okay, so where does that leave me? That leaves me wanting to put these steps in our concept map. So what I'm going to do is just quickly take a picture of them using my little snip tool. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paste them in. Okay. 
So, these steps become very important and something you should have decently committed to memory. Okay? So, this is the process in a nutshell for GCF and undistribution. Again, you've got to realize that we're doing greatest common factor, the little rhyme that it's got to come first, not rhyme, but sort of little, little jokey um, thing to remember. Our prerequisite skills are important. Okay, You have to be able to identify a GCF. With that, we saw that using the smallest exponent is good. When you're doing that, if you don't understand that, go watch another video on it. You can't move forward into this area without um, doing that fluently. And we talked about that subtracting exponents when we're doing dividing is something you should have a sense of too. Again, if you're not there, work backwards before you go forwards. So in overview, the steps are, again, find the GCF of each term, divide each term by the GCF to find the other factor, write the answer as a product of the GCF and the other factor. This makes sense because factoring means write a product. Again, the asterisk there in step one. If the first term is negative, you've got to make the GCF negative. Okay? It's just a rule. You need to have that committed to memory. Now, that concludes this video for the most part. And hopefully, you will continue on to your next video, which is factoring differences of two squares. Again, when you go to do those problems, though, you still want to check and see if you have a GCF because GCF means it's got to come first. So enjoy. I hope this enlightened you. Uh, tend to some practice problems if they're available.